Hi everyone, welcome to the third video. In this video, we'll be covering the topics of file operations, modules, and libraries. So let's get started with the topic of file operations. So far in our programs, we have been getting input from the user and then printing out the output to the user. However, there are other ways to get input and to store output when programming. One of these ways is to get the input from a file and to store the output to a file. So in this video, we will be seeing how to do this in Python. Okay, so in our file explorer, we can create a new text file. Uh, for now, make sure the file the text file is in the same folder as the Python file that you're working in. So I'm working with this video free dot py Python file. And I'll create the text file here. If you don't see the dot py on the Python file, then that, be, that means that your extensions are hidden. So go to view and then make sure that this button is clicked. If it's not clicked, you'll see that the .py will not be displayed. So make sure that is enabled. And then we can create a new text file. And by default, a text file has a .txt extension. And you can name the file basically whatever you want. I'll call mine zen.txt. Can then go ahead and open this file in notepad okay so in notepad you can go ahead and type whatever you want into this file uh, what i will do is paste out this passage um, this passage is known as the zen of python it's basically what the philosophy of python is about so you can look it up and read it if you're interested in learning a bit about the philosophy of python but then i will go ahead and save this file and what we can do next is use this file as input data for our program So to do that, we first need to open the file. So we do that using the open function. And in the function, we put the name of the file. And we store the return of that function into a variable. So I've just called that variable file. So now that we've opened the file, uh, we can start getting data from the file. So one, one way you can do that is to just read out the entire file. And that is done using the dot read function or the read method. So what the read method does is it will take all the data in the file and return it as a string so we need to store that data into a variable now i can print out that data because that data is in the form of a string so what this does is get all everything that's in a file into one string and we're storing that string in a variable so if i print it out it should print out the entire file and the last thing we have to do is actually to close the file so in programming a lot of times when you open something you also have to close it now if we didn't close this file then other programs that might try to use the file 
might run into errors or some other worse things could happen such as the file might take up extra space in your memory and every time you run the function it will take up more and more space however that probably will not happen in a small example like this but you want to build a habit of always closing your file after you open it so now let's run this file and see what happens so i've switched to the shell output and you can see that the entire file got printed out as we expected now there are many other things that you could do instead of just reading out the entire file for example if you put a number in the read function like a hundred it will only get the first 100 characters of the file so if i run this you can see it stops in the middle of this word because it went through a hundred characters if i then make a second variable and i call the read function again again with actually let's say 50 characters this time and i print out this new variable what it will do is get the next 50 characters in the file so let's run that and see what happens Okay, so you can see the first file data the first variable printed out these 100 characters and the second one printed out these 50 characters so you can see the 100 characters took it up to this word complex and it stopped in the middle of the word and then the next 50 characters started at the L in the word complex and went down to this word here so if we go back to the original program which is just using the straight read method remember that it returns the entire file as a string so this variable is actually a string so anything that you can do with a string you can do with this variable for example you can convert it to uppercase so if we print out the uppercase version of this variable it will print out the entire file in uppercase and you can see that here in the output shell you can also do something else like get a particular character at a specific index so if we want the 100th character from the file we can do it like this well actually this will give us the 101st character in the file because indexing starts at zero so if we run it we see we get the letter l which you should have expected because remember the first 100 characters took us to the p in complex so the next character would be the l in complex another way you can read the file is to read it one line at a time so this read line method it will return the first line of the file as a string so here we're storing that first line in a variable named file data
and if we run this method again like here we're running it a second time and this time storing the return in file data 2 what it will do is give us the next line of the file so file data should be the first line of the file and file data 2 should be the second line of the file so let's run this program to see if that works and here you can see it works it prints out the first line and then the second line and you can keep calling this method as many times as you want until the file runs out of lines now if you want all the lines of a file what you can do is use the read lines method so what that will do is return a list of every line in the file each of those lines would be an individual string in that list so we're storing that list in file data and if we print it out let's see what happens so the output seems a little complicated but let's take a closer look at it so we can see it's actually a list because you can see the square brackets and here is the first element of that list here is the second element of that list and here is the third one so you can see based on the quotation marks that it's actually a string each element of this list is actually a string and you can see the first string is of course the first line of the file the second string is of course the second line of the file and so on down to the last line of the file which is the last string in this list now one thing to note or rather two things to note is because these strings are in a list and not printed out directly you will see the quotation marks so that's the first thing the second thing to note is that each string ends in this backslash n so what does this backslash n mean if you have not seen it already this backslash n is how you represent a line break in a string so at the end of each line there is of course a line break which says to go to the next line so when we get the read lines when we use the read lines method it gets that line break character from the end of that line as well so these are included in the string so that's something to note um, on that same note if you print out a string which contains backslash n in it it will actually go to the next line in the output whatever output that you print out so let me just show you that quickly So you can see it printed out A, then it went to a new line, then it printed out B. So the backslash N represents a line break, meaning go to the next line. And you can include it in your own strings as well. So going back to this program, since we have a list of each line of the file, we can loop through that list. and get each individual string in that list so if we print out each line instead you can see each line gets printed out now 
you might notice that there is a blank line in between each of these and that's because remember each line from the read lines method has the line break at the end of it and when you print out something it automatically puts a line break for you so the first line break goes to the next line and then the second line break from the print function creates a blank line so that's why each line is has a blank line in between it and just to emphasize this line variable is in the form of a string so whatever you can do with a string you can do with this variable as well so if we want to print out the six character in each line we can do it like this so let's run that and see so we can see in the first line the six character is an i then a c then an e then an e and so on and you can see the i is from the word beautiful the c is from the word explicit the e is from the word simple then from the word complex again and so on now there are times where you might actually want a list of each line of the file however most of the time you just want to loop through that list and in python there is actually a shortcut to do that so instead of getting the list of lines using the read lines and then storing that in a variable and then looping through that variable you can actually just loop through the original file object from the open function and this should give us the same thing as before so here you can see it gives us the same thing as before if i remove this part and print out the entire line you can see once again it gave us the same thing as when we printed out the entire line so this is just a shortcut that you can use whenever you just want to loop through each line of the file so that is how you open a file to read the data in that file and next we will see how we can store our own data from the program into the file so in order to store data to a file we first need to open a file just as you would when reading data from the file however we open it slightly differently we add a second parameter to the open function and it's a string containing the letter w so w means write and it means that we want to store data into the file now just as a warning whatever file you put whatever file you specify if you already have that file in this folder then it will be deleted and a new file with that name will be created so you just need to be careful that you don't delete any files that you have in your folder so the file i'm going to use is out.txt and here's how you use this file so we still store the return of the open function in a variable in this case i still called it file and we can now write to that file using the write method and in that write method we specify a string that we want to put into the file so the string i've used is hello world so if i run this what it will do is create this file in the same folder if that file is already there it will delete it and create a new one and then it will store this 
message into that file. And as usual, you still need to close the file. So let's, let me just show you that my folder does not currently contain this file. So if you take a look at uh, my folder, it currently does not have the file. So now if I run, if I run the program, you can see it run. And if I switch over to, to my file explorer and refresh, actually it's, yep, it's right here. So I can then open this file in notepad. And if I switch over to that, there we go. You can see it, it puts that message into the file. Okay, and just as a note, whatever you put into the right function must be a string. So if you want to store an integer or a float or some other type of variable, you must convert it to a string first. For example, by using the str function or by using string formatting. And when you read data from a file, you also, it's in the form of a string, so you must convert those from a string to an integer or a float if that's what the form of the data you want it to be. Continuing with the write function, you can run the write function as many times as you want, and each time it will keep adding the data to the file. So if I put the word world first, or rather second, and only have the word hello in the first one, when I run it, so you can see it run i'll have to close the notepad and open it back up to see the updated version so this is what i got from the output so you can see it put hello and then world and you might have expected a space or a new line but it does not put any of those by default so if you want a space you can put the space here after the hello and when you run it in the file it will end up with a space if you want them on separate lines you can use the backslash n which i showed you earlier so actually let's try that out so let me first close the notepad and then i'll run this new code then if i open up back the notepad You can see it displays the hello and the world on separate lines because the backslash n means go to the next line. And just for completeness sake, you can have as many files open as you want. So here I have two files opened. 
one is to write to and one is to read from so i read one line from file two then i write a few messages to file one and i also write the line that i got from file two into file one and then i close both of them so if i run this program let me close the notepad you can see it run and let me open back up the notepad and this is what you get so printed out well it displayed hello then it displayed world then it displayed the first line of the zen.txt file and because i didn't put a backslash n for the world it did not go to the next line it just put out or it just put out the next message on the same line so your first challenge for this video is to create your own text file and put many numbers into it uh, the numbers are your choice between integers or floats and you can either put them on separate lines or put a space between each of them it's up to you and the challenge is to open that file and read each number from that file then into an output file you must um, you must output what is half of each of those numbers into that output file so if the input file contains the numbers 10 20 30 then in the output file you must output you must write the numbers 5 10 15 and that should be done in the code so you open the input file read the numbers then divide each of them by two and then write each of those numbers to the output file and just one thing to remember when you read from a file it's in the form of a string so you have to convert it to an integer or a float using the int or float function and when you write into a file it must be in the form of a string so to write an int or a float to the file you must convert it using the str function or using string formatting so good luck with that first challenge and you can pause the video now before we move on to the second topic so the second topic we'll be covering in this video is libraries and modules so a library is basically a whole set of code in the form of functions and classes that someone else or maybe an entire company has already written so that other people like us can use in our own programs now by default python comes with its own library known as the python standard library so to use that library you don't need to download or install anything extra it comes with python all you have to do is import the modules and we'll see how to do that in a while but first let's just go through the library a bit so you can find the library at this link up here docs.python.org slash free slash library and if we go through the library you can see all the modules in the library 
So each module is a source file which contains code that you can use in your that you can in a sense copy into your own Python programs and you can use them in your own Python programs. But you don't actually copy the code, you just import them. And I will show you how to do that in a while. So if you want, you can go through each of these and see what they're about, or if you find anyone that might be interesting to you. So for example, there is the math module. If we open that. The math module contains many math operations. So for example, a seal function, a greatest common denominator function, many other functions that that um are that you could do in um uh, that you could use for math operations so you can see another one here the random module the random module contains many functions that you can use to generate random numbers so that's another interesting one that you might be interested in and there are many many more so if you ever want to just look through them you can just go to this link and take a look at them so how do you use a module so to use a module you import the module by typing the word import followed by the name of the module in this case we're importing the math module so when we import the math module we can basically use any function or class or variable that is in that module so in this example i've created a variable called x which i've stored the number five in then i can use the square root function from the math module to find the square root of x and it will return the answer and I can store the answer in a variable called y and then I can print out that variable so to use the functions in a module you have to do the module name dot and then the function name and the same thing is true for classes in that module or variables in that module so let's run this and see what it gives us So you can see it printed out this number, which is the square root of five. And just to say it again, uh, the math module contains many functions that for various math operations. So if you ever need to do a program which uses a lot of math, you can check out the math module another very commonly used module is the random module so if i change this to random we can import the random module and we can start using the functions in that module now one of these functions is the rand int function And what it does is it produces a random number from between A and B and you have to specify what A and B are. So in this case, I specified between one and 100. So if I print out this random number, let's see what it will give us. So you can see it gave us the number 93. So if I run it again, you can see this time it gives us the number 75. So this function from the random module creates a random number between 1 and 100. And we can store 
the return the number in a variable and then print it out and just so you know you don't have to store the variable store the number in a variable first and then print it out you can just can just print out the return from the function directly and it will work the same way but sometimes you need the variable if you want to use it somewhere else in the program and as you can see this time it gave us the number 70 and the random module has many other functions that you can do to generate different types of random numbers for example, the random.uniform generates a random float between 1 and 100 instead of a random integer. And if you want, you can go through the random module on the web page and see all the other functions you can use to generate random functions, random numbers. There is something else I wanted to point out, which is the built-in functions in Python. So although there are many, many modules in the Python standard library, sometimes you don't even need to import a module from the standard library to be able to do what you're looking for. Sometimes Python already has that function without needing to import anything. And you can see a list of those functions here on this URL, docs.python.org slash free slash library slash functions dot html. So this lists out all the functions that are available in Python without even needing to import anything. So you can go through all of them and see what they all do. And if you don't find what you're looking for, you can then start looking at the Python standard library. And if you still don't find what you're looking for, there are many libraries that you can download and install on your own. Um, a few common examples are the Pygame library and the NumPy library. So I'll show them here, the Pygame library and the NumPy library. The Pygame library is to create games using Python and these are actual graphical visual games and the NumPy library is used very often in math and engineering and science and it's used to do a large amounts of mathematical calculations. So if you're interested in one of those you can look up online how to install those into your Python. So one final thing to point out before I give you the second challenge is that you can actually import as many modules as you want. So here I've imported the random mo module and the math module and I can use both of them in this program now that I've imported both of them. So I do math dot square root two and math dot square root three. What this will do is give print out a random number, random float between the square root of two, which is around 1.4 and the square root of 3, which is around 1.7. So 
so if i run it you can see it gives me this number 1.45 so your second challenge for this video is to create many random numbers and store all of them into a single file then to read from that file and calculate the square root of each of those numbers and then store the square roots into their own file and once again just remember when you read into a reading from a file or write into a file it must be in the form of a string so you need to do the conversions so that is your challenge second challenge for this video you can pause the video now and try it on your own so the last thing i want to show you in this video is how to use your own source files as modules that you can import into your other source files so here in my file explorer you can see that i have two python files in this folder one is called vid3.py and one is called module1.py so what i could do is import this file into this one and whatever functions variables classes etc that are in this file i can use them into this one so here on the right you can see my module one file which contains two functions right now and if i switch over to my vid3 file you can see what i've done is imported my module one file so the how i do that is import and then the name of the file you don't need to put the dot py actually you shouldn't put the dot py then to run function one func one from my module one file it's module one dot func and then you run the function so the same way you would run a function from uh from the standard library modules it's the same for your own modules and here i ran the square function from module one using the parameter as the number six i've stored the return value and then i will print it out and if you look at the function itself the square function in the module one file you can see that it returns the square of the parameter so hopefully i should get 36 from that so let me switch over to the shell and let me run the vid free file and you can see it works as expected i get the hello world from running func1 and then i get the 36 from running the square function so that is how you can create your own modules with that you can import into your other source files so your final challenge for this video is to based on your solution from the previous challenge to split those up into separate functions and have each of those functions in their own module and then import all of those modules into one source file and then run all of the functions and hopefully if you did everything properly it will work as normal so that is it for this video thank you for watching and goodbye for now